called at the time, was proclaimed by many as the war to end all wars. It was a war that turned boys and young men into seasoned fighters. 330,000 Australians served overseas in World War I. 60,000 never returned to Australia's shores. One man who survived in World War I was Robert Harris. In his early 90s, he was invited to return to the Western Front, where he had fought over 70 years before. In 1990, an invitation of the Australian Government, he was asked to return to the Gallipoli Peninsula. He joined a select band of men who honoured their country at Gallipoli 75 years before. I have attempted to piece together the wartime experience of a young Robert Harris. His feelings at the list in the war. Well, I was a bit bored with existence. I was at the teachers' college, there wasn't much to do, and we were very cut up about the, about the Germans' attitude in the, world, in, the, in the world. We were quite prepared to have a go at them. Uh-huh. Yes, so you you enjoyed, or did a lot of your friends enlist with you? Even. Did a lot of your friends enlist with you, or was no, it just as you? a matter of fact, I had another one of the students, it was a natural science examination, the last examination, we were at the showground. Mm -hmm. He said to me, look, they're going to open, open for enlistment today. We'll, do we'll dodge this paper and go and enlist. <laughs> I, I wasn't very keen on it because I was interested in the subject. He said, look, I'll have a look at the paper, I'll get your paper, I'll have a look at it. If I can't do it, I'll come and stand alongside you. Before I got my paper, you were standing alongside of me. <laughs> And we went, we went over to the showground, but apparently they weren't quite ready. We saw an officer there who uh, took out homes and all about us, and we were the first in Sydney to enlist. Oh, right. He was killed later, killed at the neck in Gallipoli. Okay, and did you know much about... He Sorry, did you know much about Germany or Austria or Hungary before you left? Well, I knew as much about Germany as I knew about England, probably. I might have thought it was a lot, but it wasn't very much. <laughs> okay. And did you have any military training before you left? Yes. We, in Australia, we had compulsory training. Cadets and then the, the uh, senior corps. I was in this... I passed from the cadets into the senior corps, and we used to have drill every Thursday night in Glen Innes. Oh. And uh, we, we'd get there about 8 o'clock, it'd be pitch dark, the fellows would get in, they'd muck up the lights so that they couldn't be lit, and then we'd all go home. That was the, <laughs> that, that was the military training we had. Oh, and so how long did that last? That lasted for about six months. Okay, and did you get a lot out of that? Not very much, <laughs> only darkness. <laughs> oh, right. And so, okay, and when you were told you were going, when were you told you were going to be sent overseas? Well, I enlisted on the 17th of August. No, on the 12th of August, and we, we went overseas on the 17th, so there wasn't much room for any training. <laughs> we, we, we learned how to, how to put together the equipment. That's about all we did. That's just about all. That's about all we did. Did you have any idea of when you were go where you were going? That yes, we were told we were going to New Guinea. The Germans held a uh, part of New Guinea, you know? So we went up to take it from them. We did that quite successfully. And how long did you spend there? I spent about nine, about seven months. At New Guinea? New and, Guinea. And where did you go from there? I went home. To Australia? To Australia. And then? I got malaria. I was teaching for about three months, and eventually I enlisted again. I went from there to Gallipoli. Did you go to the Middle East to train Gallipoli. first? Did you go to the Middle East to train or did you go straight to Italy? We went to, to Egypt. Egypt. We spent about a month in Egypt before we went to Gallipoli. Mm -hmm. um, there was much training. <laughs> what was life like on the ships? Well, it was very different. Very different. Yes. Yeah. Very different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the ships were not much the same. You fitted in the be as best you could. There was a, a place, a dining, a dining hall where we went down our meals. And then we, in most cases, when we went to New Guinea, we 
Parkway uh, uh, Hammocks. Hammocks. What are they called? Hammocks. Yeah, yeah. Hammocks. 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 Yes. yes, either. I've got very bad memory. <laughs> we, we hunt hammocks instead of hammocks. Otherwise, we camped about the deck anywhere. It wasn't a very comfortable. None of the trips were very comfortable. Was it very crowded? Well, uh, there were many more people on, as you may imagine, many more on, on that would have been on an ordinary boat. Oh, right. Oh. So it was quite uncomfortable. Mm, I can imagine. <laughs> um, where were you initially landed? Hey, bud? Where were you initially landed at Gallipoli? At uh, when or where? Where. Where? As a as a cove. Yeah, and when? Well, in uh, the 2nd of November, 1915. And did you, oh, did you spend much time in the trenches, or? Yes, we spent most of the time, we had to spend all the yeah. time in the trenches, because that's all there was to get any place you could stop. We didn't have all much, much of the country. <laughs> there was just room to dig our trenches, and the room for the Turkish trenches, and we, we stopped inside the trenches, and sometimes fired a rifle at each other. <coughs> Were the conditions? Would Even? you like to describe the conditions at Gallipoli? Even? Would you like to describe the conditions at Gallipoli? The conditions at Gallipoli weren't weren't particularly good. It was the climate was it wasn't winter. It was uh, getting on towards winter, but the climate was quite warm. Water was very scarce. All of our water to be landed. Food was scarce also, and uh, it, the troops we didn't have enough soldiers. With the result, when we were on duty in the trench, we did an hour on and an hour off, which was a bit pretty solid throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So what did you do in your hour off? When we out, slept. <laughs> slept. Okay. Got a little dug out and slept if we could. Mm -hmm. So you, you wouldn't have got much sleep then? Not, no, only an hour of the stretch. Okay. Um, could you describe a typical day? At Gallipoli? A day? All right, you got to, You might be on duty, say, at uh, five o'clock in the morning, and you'd go off. Then you'd go back to your, to your dugout and you'd have an hour's sleep. By then breakfast would come on and you'd go back into the line again for another hour. You'd be on and off all day in that way. Did you have bully beef and the biscuits? Plenty, like of, those plenty of bully so beef, that's all we had. Oh, you, did you like that or...? Yeah? I suppose you had to get used to it. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, that'll die. But did many people dislike it or refuse to eat it? Many people... Dislike it, refuse well, to eat it? Well, everybody... Bully beef isn't bad stuff to eat. It's something you can eat eat regularly without much trouble. Mm -hmm. But they, you had biscuit with it, which is very, very hard. And the flies gave you a lot of trouble? Even? Did the flies give you a lot of trouble? The flies were very bad. Particularly bad, the flies. They weren't so bad when I got there. But before that, anybody who had a meal ate half flies. Oh. <laughs> there, were, there were millions of them. When I got there, there were plenty of mosquitoes and flies. Oh, no, that's terrible. Fleas. Oh, that's terrible. Um, were you involved in making homemade bombs? or? Yes, we used to make bombs? bombs out of ordinary jam tins. Fill them up with powder and lumps of metal and stone, anything. Put a wick on them. We could light them and throw them. And did you make periscope rifles? Did you Help make paris periscope rifles? No. As a matter of fact, they weren't made by many. There weren't very many of those. They were used when we went at the evacuation. They put them up on the top of, on the top of the trench. They were worked by a can of water, dripping. Mm -hmm. Water dripped into a can. Eventually, when it got to a certain Wait, he pulled the trigger and the gun fired. That was the method of the type of gun. Okay. There were only not too many of them either, there about half a dozen, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And did you meet any Turks over there? Meet any Turks? Yeah. No, I didn't see a Turk all the time I was at Gallipoli. Oh, right. That's unusual. Okay, and did you meet any of the VC winners? Any? VC winners, Victorian Cross winners? Yes, we had one in our, in our units. Was that, did you meet Jacker? Did you meet? But, um, did you meet Jacker? No, I didn't. You heard a lot about him? Well, I've got a book of his. Yeah, he's just That's reading right. it now. Mm hmm Okay. And how was the news received when you were told that you were going to leave Gallipoli? Well, 
we were pretty low as far as sleep and food were concerned. But most people, we weren't certain we were going off. Kitchener came to the uh, peninsula. We saw him there and he discussed the withdrawal of the Australians. And it was kept, they didn't tell anybody because in case people were taken prison, they, they, they might the budget to the Turks. So at any rate, about the beginning of December, we knew we were going off. They, uh, we had an idea, they had this idea in the trenches. Nobody was to be seen by the Turks. Had to keep low. No shot, no guns would be fired. That went on for two or three days. Then the Turks got a bit suspicious and they attacked. But they were, we had to fire at them then. And that spoiled that part of it. But once that was over, we started again. And that it went on then for a couple of weeks. And eventually, we all got out without any casualties. Very successful. It was? it was very successful. Yeah. Okay. Um, where did you go after you left Gallipoli? Went back to Egypt. To train? To further well, your training? Well, yes, we went back to we had main, main new units. Half of our 2nd Battalion was it was taken away and went half to the 54th. And that's how they, they increased the size of the Australian Army. Cut the regiments in half and made another another battalion of them. Okay, and did you go on to the Western Front or in yes, Europe from there? In uh, April we left uh, we left Egypt and went to land at Marseilles and went up to the uh, went up to the Western Front. And were the conditions any better there or worse? Conditions well in some cases they were they were in some cases they weren't. In winter time the trenches were up to your, up to your knees in mud. And you use the duck boards? Well, duck boards, yes, they were much good. They used to get buried in the mud. They were, <laughs> they were about a foot under the mud. Oh, well. But they were all right in reasonably dry weather. But the trenches weren't, they weren't a very good home. So, would you say worse or? Even? Worse than Gallipoli or not really? Were they as good as Gallipoli? Worse. Were they worse well, than Gallipoli They were or? better at Gallipoli than, than uh, France. Right. Because there was a lot of wet weather in France, there was very little in Gallipoli. In Gallipoli, they were reasonably dry. They were very deep in, in Gallipoli. But in France, in some cases, they are only about a foot deep or two feet deep. Okay. Um, would you recall for me the places that you went in the Western, or at the Western Front? Uh, well, we went, we went to France, and then we went up to uh, the firing line. From there, we went to Belgium, back to France again. We spent most of our time in France and Belgium. Later I went to Germany, and of course we had leave, we went to England. Okay, and you spent a lot of time there, or? In England? Yeah. I spent about 10 days there. <laughs> okay. Um, You're right? Okay, yes. <laughs> Good. Yeah. We went to Fromelles, we stopped there to get used to the Germans. From there we, we marched down from there to the, the Somme, the, the Battle of the Somme, which started. And we took, took part in the Battle of, uh, of Pozieres. We took Pozieres, and then we went out, went up to, to Ypres. We spent a couple of weeks at Ypres, and went back again to Pozieres, and attacked uh, attacked Moke Farm. And there were yeah, like a lot of casualties there. From there we went, uh, where did we go from there? We went back up to uh, Ypres again. And there was a, st a start up there, and uh, from east we apes we went went on a rest. We came back to Bully Court, and Bully Court was on the Hindenburg line. Fritz by that time had started to retreat. He retreated from Hapland Court back to Bully Court, and we followed him, and we attacked him at Bully Court, and uh, we drove him out of the Hindenburg line there. From there we went went back up north. And new battles were forming up at uh, Ypres, and we took part in some of those. At the end of that battle, 1917, I uh, I went away to to England to Oxford to the commission uh, officer school. I spent about five months there. Then I went back to the Western Front when they began with the war. Okay. Did you experience a gas attack? During the no, we didn't have a gas attack, but there were gas attacks. One just after we went to France, 
We were at a place called Flair Bay, and there was a hell of a noise one night with the, with the shells being banged and so on. And we looked out, it was, and it was a moonlight night. There was a big white bank of clouds coming up. It was a, ga a gas attack. It was on our left. A lot of the uh, 20th Battalion were killed in that. Did you say any, or meet any of the soldiers yeah. who were... Did you meet any of the soldiers who had experienced that? No, I didn't meet anyone who experienced it. Okay. And by 1917, the debate over conscription was... Even? By 1917, the debate for conscription yes, was Yes, well, the conscription was uh, debated strongly in the army, and most of the diggers were in favour of it, and most of them voted for it. About the conscription... Even? About the conscription debate... Oh, the, yes. Uh, we, the debate was arranged rather hotly in France. There were a, f a few who didn't believe in conscription, but most of us believed and we voted for it. But of course we were voted, uh, the, the, the ballot went against us. Okay, and what was your reason for voting for Well, it? the point was, they said, uh, we were over there doing, you know, fighting, mm -hmm. and half these fellows were back in Australia having a good time. We objected to that. <laughs> No, we, we, we wouldn't object to it today, but uh, we did then. Okay. And so your fellow soldiers you obviously mean? approved. Your fellow soldiers approved the same thing. Well, the bulk of them did, yes. The bulk of them voted for conscription. Okay. And apart from malaria, were you injured during the war? Yes, I was wounded twice in the right hand. Shot? Bullet? Yeah. A bullet wound? Bullet, yeah. A bullet wound. I was right here. Right in the bullet went in between the fingers, and the, the hand there, and stuck in my chest. Oh. That is the worst wound I had. A very, very simple one. It didn't go into his chest very far. And were the, did you go to um, hospitals? I went there? to London, to London, the hospital that day. And that's when you went to Britain? Was that? No, that was that was the second time I was there. Okay. And I was there for the armistice. Oh right. Um. Were you, or how did you react when the soldiers around you were killed? When the, when the soldiers around you were killed, how did you react? Well, nobody reacted very strongly. After all, you were moving, moving along, had to go, and you realised the fact that someone was going to get killed, and it was your coverage bad luck. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, you didn't break down and weep, you know. Yes. You felt felt very sorry for you, fellow. Mm -hmm. But it, 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 went, it was over in a minute or so. He was dead. And you, you appreciated that. The next day, you, was, you forgot about him. Didn't forget about him, but you gave it away anyway. Didn't, didn't worry very much. Mm -hmm. And how did you react, or what was your first thoughts when you were told that Germany was going to surrender in the war? How, we, when how get, did you react? To I got drunk. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? He got drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so, did lot, your soldiers yeah. obviously... Yeah. Did all of the soldiers get drunk too? Oh, well, <laughs> only those who had enough money. <laughs> oh, so it's a hush-hush secret. <laughs> and did you, um, what medals did you receive during the war? Even? What medals did you receive during the war? Oh, the usual ones. Would you mind telling me what they were? Yeah. Would you mind telling me what they were? Well, there was the Gallipoli Medal. The uh, service, General Service Medal and uh, the French Medal and uh, mentioned in the dispatches. Okay. He's got a little, what's it do? Farms. A little leaf. Um, at the end of the war, it was mentioned in how did, at the end of the war, see. how did you feel? <laughs> about the politicians who had got the countries into the war in the first place? Well, I don't think you're worried about it. We were anxious to get home, that's the main thing. The war was over and we'd won, that was the point. That was the main thing. That was the big, the big thing that we, we beat, we built up the Germans. Okay. And the war had a significant... Even? The war had a significant impact on Australia, especially for those who were directly involved. How did the war years affect your life as a young man and later on throughout your life? Well, I don't know whether it affected me very much. I was, uh, when I came back, I, I'd been trained as a teacher. I became a teacher and remained a teacher. And where did you teach? 
I taught in Sydney and in the country. Okay. And what did a lot of your, or what did, yeah. uh, what did other soldiers do when they came back to the Well, war? a lot of them didn't get a job. They they had been trained in nothing, and there was a good deal of hardship among them. But the bulk of them just did their ordinary work and we started. We became Australian citizens. That's the best way to put it. So, did you consider yourself lucky that you had the training beforehand? Well, I was very lucky. Yeah. I consider myself very, very lucky. And how did you feel when you journeyed back from France to Gallipoli and Gallipoli recently? When we were told to go back for Gallipoli and France, we had to leave Gallipoli. Oh no! Recently, like your last journey. In 1990. Oh, 1919. Well, I don't know. I, I was happy to get out, get the war over. Most of us were. Keep on going. Sorry. Well, most of us were very happy to get there. Very anxious to get the boat. We went to England. I waited 12 months to get on the boat to come. The result, the, it, the time went, went very, very slowly. Okay. And how did you feel? when you journeyed back to France and Gallipoli in 1985 and 1990? Well, as a matter of fact, this last trip back, I, I really couldn't tell you. Gallipoli is not the same as it was then. Gallipoli is now covered with trees. There wasn't a tree on Gallipoli when we were there, it was a desert. But now the Turks are covered with trees. You couldn't, you couldn't recognize one thing apart from, uh, apart from a, a big rock on the, uh, which have the biggest name after a, a, a monument in, in Egypt, but it didn't react. It didn't, didn't react on me at all. The, I, I, I saw the graves of fellows I the men who were kill, killed in my unit. They were all mostly spaced, big monuments and so on. It wasn't Gallipoli at all to me. No. It, it isn't now. I, I couldn't. I really couldn't understand it. Did you meet any Turks over there while you were there? Meet? Any Turks? Turks, yeah. yes, we met quite a lot of Turks. Were they friendly, very friendly? Oh, they're, they're a very fine lot, the Turks. They've, they've done a great job on the peninsula. And all, apart from their religion, they're, they're great workers. As a matter of fact, my son, John, gave me a teddy bear to give to the child of, of any Turk that's fought against it. Uh, I w looked round, you see all I could find, and we had a driver of a bus. He had eight misrelations killed by the Australians, so I gave this to him. I gave this to uh, Teddy Bear to him, to give to his daughter. Teddy Bear was the car. His, his, great, his grandfather was killed and among those who were killed. Did he like? Did he really appreciate? Well, he couldn't speak. He couldn't speak oh. English. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> he would have been through. Needed a translator. He looked pleased. <laughs> oh, that's the main thing, yeah. And the recent trip back to Gallipoli by you and your fellow soldiers seems to have united the con your country and given it a sense of national pride. Again, as it did at that time. Do you think? Any other good things came out of World War One? Out of World War One, I? I very much doubt it. I don't. I think when, when you consider that over fifty thousand Australians Australians were killed, that was just a small portion. I don't think the war, despite what may have happened since, the war isn't responsible for any any improvement uh, in the world. I don't think the war the wars do the slightest bit of good. Apart from this business of Gallipoli, people think, well, they were brave people, they went and they fought hard there and so on. What good's that? No good, anyway. And just, you know, a couple of last questions. Did you write any letters or keep any letters from the war? I've got a diary. Yeah, did you? Who? Have you got it now? No, oh, well, listen, it's been published in a, in, in a um, magazine form by the 2nd second, second, second Battalion. I've got bits of it here, that's and, all. And, did, and what happened, Even? or what did you do with it when you arrived? When I, well, actually it was in half a dozen books. 
and I rewrote it when I came home. I I sold it to the uh, to the library, the Mitchell Library. I uh, sold it for ten pounds. Oh. Yeah, nobody else got ten pounds for their diary. They all got five. I got ten. I don't know why. <laughs> but anyway, next to good. <laughs> about twenty years after, I thought I'd like to have a look at it again. So I went and saw them. They said, "Look, if you'd like, you can take. We'll give you a copy of this, and we'll get we'll get it duplicated for you." So they got it duplicated. It cost me forty dollars. <laughs> I, I got. I paid twenty dollars. I got twenty dollars for it. I got forty to get a copy of it back. Yeah. Any rate, I got a number of the books, and they were all different sizes. I some were in pencils, various, very hard to read. On the sides, I trans transcribed it into one book. Then I have that book. Oh, very interesting. Oh, yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> Thank you very much Don't for, mention it. for you know, letting me ask you I hope it's some value. <laughs> <laughs> no. What neat handwriting, though. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a French flag, isn't it? French so flag, yeah. yeah. July 19th, what? Did you get the jacket? It's fantastic. It's just, oh, it's amazing. Did you see a tank during World War One? Did I see a tank? Yes, yes, I saw several. And what were your first thoughts on them? Well, as a matter of fact, we were a bit dumbfounded. We didn't know what they were. We heard of tanks, we didn't know what they were. Eventually we saw them, they looked clumsy, slow. We weren't very impressed with them. And we were less impressed when we saw them in the Battle of Bully Court, where they came over and three of them were knocked out immediately. Uh, later, when it came to the towards the end of the war, they were more they could move about more quickly and they were more efficient. Been hit by a shell, and the whole crew had been burnt to death. The remains of the crew were lying inside the inside the tank had been moved out. So very, un they were very unsuccessful in the beginning, but once they, well, they were successful up to it. The, the situation was that where the Germans when the Germans got used to them. They waited on them with with guns, and of course one shell was enough to bury to knock the tank out. Mm -hmm. Only had to shoot straight, and they were right. Okay. But they caused a lot of consternation among the Germans for a start. With the, the, a lot of them were used at uh, one big breakthrough they had just after Bully Court. They took a big area. The English units took a big area of land. They, the tanks were very useful there. They took, brought them in on two. Two flanks. They were taking land, say that land there, about, say about 20 miles. Mm -hmm. And they had tanks on this side, tanks on that side, and they came in round uh, together, I think, and took all that lump of land from the Germans. Mm -hmm. Okay. And to, could you describe your uniform during the war? The uniform during the war was very similar to the uniform we have now. Just, we had the uh, Putties and, and uh, riding trousers and tunics. It's very similar to the tunics you see the, the soldiers wear now. Okay, and did you have a summer and a winter uniform, or no, just No, we one? had the same old winter, same old uniform all through. And did you have an officer's uniform, or? Well, we, we the officers officers didn't have an official uniform. They bought one, <laughs> had one made. So the first thing when you became a comm you got to commission, you went to the tailor and you got the, the, the uniform made the way most officers had them. Mm -hmm. better, better material. We, we read in history books now that a lot of the men, when they arrived at Gallipoli, it was so hot and they took a lot of their, their uniforms oh, off. Oh, well, that's so. And at, during the night they found it very cold. Yes, so well, that's, that was, that's very true. Uh, in summertime, they, they just went into the battle with their, with their trench trousers on, that's all, and, and putties and boots, with a bear from the waist up. Okay. And during the war, how much were you paid? Like, on a daily basis, or...? Daily, I got six shillings a week. The war soldiers got six shillings a day. Mm -hmm. They, uh, one shilling of that was put away for deferred pay, which you got when you, when you mm -hmm. came home. Yeah. 
and you had to make an allocation of two shillings to somebody, your mother or your, your wife, and you had three shillings for yourself a week. Okay. And when the last year, 1919, when you went to London or Britain, why or how did you spend your time there? Spent the time, a lot of it going on leave. When you had any money, you went on leave. <laughs> but then you stopped in camp. That's the bad thing. And why did you stay in London or Britain for that? Well, the point is there were not enough boats to bring us home. There were a lot of boats that had been sunk by the Germans during the war, and, they, and boats were at a, at, a, at a very great minimum. Did they take married couple or married men first, or what was the? No, they didn't. The, the rule was when the enlistment started, they didn't take any married men. They said they wouldn't, oh. but they took them just the same. And I believe you came in contact with the Germans during the war. Could you tell me that story about the German, oh, when you went through the hedge, about when you found the German there? You saw the German standing. Oh, yes. This was yeah. after the Battle of, um, where, we, where we took this village, I just forgot the name of the moment. Uh, I had my finger broken. And I, when we got to there, to our our destination. I handed my gun over to my number two and went back, went back to the uh, dressing station. Yet the figure, I, I thought something might come. But at the, I just left the front line. I'm going through a trench. There's a big hedge up in front of me with a gap in it. And standing in this gap was this great German. He seemed about ten feet high. He was up against the sky and made him look bigger. He had a rifle over his shoulder. I had nothing. I didn't. I just sat. I had been called by weapons behind, had nothing, any other challenge him as he was supposed to do, who goes there? And the next thing he said, come on, I'd stretch out, and he turned and went for his life. <laughs> Greatly to my pleasure. And did you capture many Germans during the war, or none? Well, you, you, during the last battle, we took about 50, captured about 50. Okay, and that's, yeah? that's all the questions that I have. That's, that's all the questions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. All answered. Yeah. Don't mention it.